school welcome back to asc 606 third session right so for in first session and second session of asc 606 revenue recognition we have covered like how earlier was a different ascs which is asc 605 605 35 605 985 and other accounting guidance for the revenue recognition which has been converted and cumbersome into the new accounting student codification which is asc 606 which is a five step model and there are few revenue uh, which are like out of scope from the asc 606 which include like lease contract financial services financial instrument guarantees and non monetary exchange right in last session we have discussed objective of asc 606 we discuss about high level overview complete overview of the five step model of asc 606 which include identification of contract with customer perform identification of performance obligation in a contract determining the transaction price allocation of the transaction price and revenue recognition right in that we have done in detail study about the first step which is identification of contract with the customer right and then we discuss about uh, uh the second uh, step also which is identification of performance obligation right and then we touch base uh, and we discuss the third step also right which include identification of transaction price in the transaction price we discuss about a uh, couple of things which is inside the or part of the transaction price which include like variable consideration and constraint to the variable constant uh, consideration right and after that we touch base on significant financing component in a revenue consideration payable to the customer and non cash consideration all these things we have discussed in detail including expected value method and most likely method in this page uh, remember like we were discussing on like variable consideration how to give the valuation to the variable consideration or constraint to the variable consideration there are two method expected value method and most likely method in which we have given uh, taken an example as well like expected value method in which we give like different weightage or different based on different probability of the respective option for example probability of the outcome is 100 dollar is 10% right so expected value of the option a outcome a is 10 dollar right and the cost we will end up incurring 120 dollar the probability of that is 60% so the expected value of option b is 72 dollar and same way for outcome expected cost probably would be 150 dollar and the probability of the same is 30% so expected value of the option c which is 30% probability of happening of certain event will be 45 dollar so we'll combine together option a b and c expected value that will give us the total expected value of the different outcomes possible for the different scenario in which variable consideration is being calculated right when you choose most likely method when you choose most likely method either this will be happening or it will not be happening so probability is more than 50% of happening and less than 50% of not happening and you choose one option either option a or you choose option b if you choose the option a then the full value of the option a would be considered as a most likely value right here if you see from the outcome a b and c let's say you have chosen option b which is 60% which is the more probability of things to be happen so the cost attached to the 60% is 120 dollar so if you are using most likely method then you will be considering 120 dollar as the value if you are using expected value method then you will be doing all this weighted average math to calculate that right make sense sir ek ek question hai mera mere ko ye samajh mein aa gaya ek baat theek hai ki do method mein se kisi ek method se aap nikal lo isko ek ke andar aap acceptable method वो तो एक्सेप्टेबल है लेकिन मेरी जो पर्सनल नॉलेज है मुझे जो पता है मैंने जो देखा है रियल वर्ल्ड में वो मैंने कभी देखा नहीं कि वेरिएबल कंसिडरेशन कैसे कैलकुलेट करी जाती है मतलब ऐसा कहीं दिस इज एक्चुअली न्यू अनिकेत लाइक यू आर राइट इन इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड वी हैव वी डू नॉट हैव दिस टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट राइट इन आईएफआरएस 15 दे हैव स्टार्टेड बैक इन 2000 
17 and same thing has been taken in ASA 606 as well for the US gap. So might be you have not bought exposure to such kind of accounting as of now. But I'll give you an example. Let's say, uh, for example, uh, if you are a car dealer, right? Let's continue with the example which we were discussing earlier. So along with the car, you sell extended warranty and insurance, right? Now you are a car dealer. You need to predict. You need to predict the future sales possible. So based on the historical method, based on the historical, you can say trend, and uh, based on the historical sell, we'll see if in a month, if I sell hundred cars, if I sell hundred car, out of which ninety five percent of the people purchase insurance, five percent of them they take their own insurance, right? And out of those 100, on an average, 40% people buy uh, extended warranty as well, right? This, met, this assumption you can take, right? Based on your historical experience. Make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hmm? So now, if you need to estimate your future sales revenue, then how do you estimate? So for example, if your car is of, let's say $50,000, right? And your insurance is of, let's say $2,000 and uh, extended warranty is, let's say $3,000. Hmm? So how do you calculate based on which method, based on any of the method? Let's say you, you obtain as per your revenue recognition accounting policy, expected value method. In expected value method, future car sale, let's say for the next, next month, you assume is 100 cars, $50,000, plain Valina, $5 million is your, oh, sorry, $500,000 is your, sorry, $5 million is your revenue, right? Now it's time to calculate the possible insurance income. Hmm? So there might be a possibility like here, like we have kept 95% as a percentage. So here, it could be possible you take 100 percentage is the probability like 100 percent people will buy your insurance is the probability is 10 percent. Hmm? 80 percent people buy your insurance is you have the probability of let's say 60 percent. Right. And 40 percent people will buy your insurance and the probability of that is, is uh, balancing. Maybe let me present in a white screen. So, and we can give the number to it as well. Uh, can you see my white screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, let's say for extended warranty. So, your historical data says 40% people buy extended warranty. Right. And now you are making a calculation for the future in next month, how much percentage of the total car buyer will take extended warrant. Hmm? So you took three options, A option, B option and C option, 100%, 60% and say 30%. 100% you are saying uh, the probability is uh, uh, probability is let's say 10% that 100% people will buy. 60% people will buy the probability is let's say 30% and 30% people will buy is the probability 60%. Hmm? And the cost, this is like option A, option B, option C, right? This is the probability of mine. And sales price of extended warranty is let's say $3,000. And if you reduce the sales price to let's say $2,500, then probability is that 30% people will buy. And if you further reduce it to $2,000, then probability is that 60% people will buy, right? Through the expected value method, what will be the future estimated sale of extended warranty? So, so then, huh? 300, 10% of is 30% of this is 750, right? And 60% of this is 
ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड राइट वॉट इज द टोटल फिफ्टी टू 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 फाइव जीरो राइट दिस इज समथिंग यू कैन प्रोजेक्ट योर रेवेन्यू नहीं सर एक सेकंड एक सेकंड अभी आपने ये स्टेप क्यों किया कि टेन परसेंटेज निकाला उसका सॉरी इफ आई एम सेइंग द सेल्स प्राइस इज ऑफ एक्सटेंडेड वारंटी इज थ्री थाउजेंड डॉलर द प्रोबेबिलिटी इज दैट टेन परसेंट पीपल विल बाय ठीक है ठीक है इफ आई रिड्यूस द सेल प्राइस टू टू फी ट्वेंटी फाइव हंड्रेड प्रोबेबिलिटी इज दैट थर्टी परसेंट पीपल विल बाय इफ आई फर्दर रिड्यूस द प्राइस द प्रोबेबिलिटी इज दैट सिक्सटी पीपल विल बाय ठीक है सो वॉट विल बी द फ्यूचर सेल्स एस्टिमेटेड फ्यूचर सेल्स इफ यू यूज एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू मेथड देन द एस्टिमेटेड सेल्स विल बी टू थाउजेंड टू फिफ्टी बट इफ यू यूज मोस्ट लाइकली सर लेकिन आपने कॉस्ट की कॉस्ट क्यों निकाल दी है या तो या तो सेलिंग प्राइस दे रखा है तो मेरा मोस्ट लाइकली तो 2000 मैं मान सकता हूं ना प्राइस 2000 हाँ, में so, मेरी वारंटी बिक जाएगी तो दिस विल बी द मोस्ट लाइकली इफ यू चूज मोस्ट लाइकली मेथड देन यू विल कंसीडर 2000 राइट right. फिर आपने ये एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू क्या निकाल लिया ये एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू दीस आर टू मेथड बेसिकली मैन इदर यू कैन चूज मोस्ट लाइकली मेथड एज एन अकाउंटिंग पॉलिसी or you can choose expected value method as an accounting policy so both the options are given to management whatever they feel is best suited for their business they can choose either method okay so wo so company can company can choose most likely method and consider 2000 expected revenue or company can choose expected value method and they can consider 22500 okay sir ek sawal ho raha hai अभी हम बात कर रहे हैं कि हम रेवेन्यू रिकॉग्नाइज करेंगे अपना ठीक है इसके अंदर बीच में एक ये स्टेप आया है जिसका हमने नाम दिया है जिसका हमने नाम दे रखा है कि वेरिएबल कंसीडरेशन वेरिएबल कंसीडरेशन एक्चुअली में जो ये पार्ट है मेरा उसका है क्या बोलते हैं हम प्राइजिंग वाले का हाँ प्राइजिंग नहीं नहीं वो समझ गया मैं लेकिन मेरा सवाल ये है कि ये हम सिर्फ वैल्यू निकाल रहे हैं यहाँ पे मेरा इस बात से रेवेन्यू कैसे रिकॉग्नाइज हो जाएगा ये मेरी समझ से बाहर है कि रेवेन्यू कैसे मैं रिकॉग्नाइज कर लूंगा अपना एक्सपेक्टेड रेवेन्यू तो मेरा तब रिकॉग्नाइज होता है जब मेरी सामने वाले के साथ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट भी हो गया या तो कोई कॉन्ट्रैक्ट हो ही नहीं रहा सामने वाले के साथ तो मैं ये कैसे रेवेन्यू रिकोगनाइज कर लूंगा की बाईस रुपए के हिसाब से मेरा वो वारंटी की वो आ जाएगी ये तो मेरी एस्टिमेशन है एस्टिमेशन को मैं अपना रेवेन्यू कैसे बना सकता हूँ वेरी गुड पॉइंट टू थिंग्स हेयर निकेत वन इज लेट से लाइक इन लास्ट क्लास वट यू है दिस इज वन फोर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू राइट हेयर कार हंड्रेड कार्स लेट से यू हैव सोल्ड ऑन वन फोर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी राइट एंड यू हैव गिवन द ऑप्शन टू बाय extended warranty within 90 days extended warranty within 90 days from the purchase of car right so here in this case this will fit like you are expecting like this many people will purchase the extended warranty and this will be your revenue now coming to the second thing now coming to the second thing constraint side in the constraint side so how much will be the material ob material option how much will be the material option cost to company hmm so here you have given if you have purchased the car and within 90 days if you buy the extended warranty it will give you 50% discount right so here from this 100 you assume you taken an assumption based on historical trend if you give the pricing of 3000 then 10% people will buy if you 
give the pricing uh, once again sorry so from here you will assume that if you have given this 50% discount then almost out of this 100 40% people will purchase right and if you have given a discount of let's say 60% then probability is that 60% people will buy right these two option you have given 50% or 60% and your sales price for extended warranty is let's say $5,000. Right? So now you have given a material option. Material option one is 50%. That is 2,500, right? In this option, you are expecting 40% people will avail, right? So how much will be the, if you are using expected value method, how much will be the, uh, you can say collection in future, 40% of 2,500, $1,000, right? And option two is 60% discount. In that, how much will be the cost? 2,000 will be the sales price and 60% people will be availing this. How much is that? 1200? 1200. If you are using expected value method, then it is 2200 will be your future revenue. Future revenue is, uh, sorry, future cost. Hmm. We are giving this discount. That means this will be reduced from your transaction price. So today you need to reduce 2200 from your transaction price based on future discount on the material option you have given. Now, it, does it make sense? Sir, I have a calculation that you have to do. There is no problem. Uh -huh. So, you are saying that in my books, in books, you are saying that I will show my AR. No, no, no. Like here, we have discussed on discount, material option. That means you need to give this discount. You need to reduce your sales price. This is a constraint. If your sales price is $50,000 per car, then you need to reduce 2200 for the material option. And you need to book 47800 as a revenue, right? And when in future you will be selling, then you will be booking the respective revenue. Okay. Right? So, yeah, car ki sale hui hai. Uh, at the time of sale of car, you'll be booking revenue 47,800 and you'll be parking 2,200 in provision. Okay. So, right? provision ko main reverse karunga when, or... when actual sale of extended warranty will happen. So, extended sale of warranty is not available with the car. Ke hi. Ne, you have given a 90 days option. No? Achha. Yes. So here again, Boijo, like last time we have uh, discussed this breakage concept, right? Okay. Either they will opt for it, otherwise it will expire. So you can recognize the revenue at the time of expiry or availment, whichever is earlier. Okay. ठीक है सर अब समझ में आ गया मेरे कि ये इसका एक कॉन्सेप्ट एक्चुअली में प्लग कहां पे होगा चीज समझ में आई पहले ऐसा लग रहा था कि ये 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 कंफ्यूजन ही यही क्रिएट हो रहा था कि आप इस इस बेसिस पे मैंने कहीं नहीं देखा कि आप अपना पूरी कार की आप ऐसा थोड़ी कर दोगे कि आप एस्टीमेशन के बेसिस पे अपना रेवेन्यू एआर रिकॉर्ड करोगे सेल्स रिकॉर्ड करोगे नहीं ना ये तो वो वेरिएबल कंसीडरेशन जो माइनस होने हैं कॉस्ट है वो जो कॉन्स्टेंट वेरिएबल कंसीडरेशन यस Okay, sir. Perfect. There, there might be some example where like income will also be estimated like this. So presently it's not coming, hitting my mind, but there might be some, some situation as well. So this method will be used for both variable as well as constraint to variable. No, that's okay. That's okay, sir. It's also possible for income. I've heard it. But revenue recognized, which I'm saying is revenue recognized, which I understand, that's what I know. मैं AR to sales की entry डालूँगा अपनी books में, yes. right? तो yes. उसके अंदर उसके अंदर मैं तब तक नहीं करूँगा ना जब तक सामने वाले को मैंने goods deliver नहीं कर दिए। Yes. But despite, despite of delivering goods, if you have any 
performance obligation pending then also you cannot recognize the complete revenue you will be recognizing the revenue only for those uh, performance obligation for which no further obligation is pending at your end perfect sir theek hai samajh mein aa gaya samajh mein aa gaya so so we discussed this uh, allocation of transaction price as well in last class now let's jump into revenue recognition so revenue recognition four step let's quickly uh, uh, revise it first one is contract identification of contract contract should be a valid contract and should have a consideration right second identification of performance obligation third is identification of transaction price fourth is allocation of transaction price to performance obligation now fifth thing most important thing is recognizing the revenue when do you recognize the revenue when performance obligation is satisfied or or it may be expire or there is no future performance obligation kind of non refundable thing for example if you book a flight ticket which is a non refundable ticket right mm. so air airlines can recognize the revenue immediately for that because those are non refundable price non -refundable. right so they have no obligation to pay you back again right right sir so kosh uh, let's understand an entity recognizes the revenue when or as it satisfy the performance obligation by transferring the promised goods and services to the customer so as and when you have transfer the ownership of goods and services to the customer you can recognize the revenue that's a basic revenue recognition fundamental right which we have studied in your graduation and in your masters as well it's absolutely same Hmm? but transfer when this transfer is actually considered as a transfer has occurred when customer obtain the control of goods and services either at point in time or over the period of time right in the last class we discussed both what is point in time and what is over the period of time for example if you are giving any material let's say uh, you went to the dominos and you ordered for the pizza and they have delivered the pizza to you right that is a point in time delivery as you order they have deliver and you have make the payment and that's it right no future continuation of the agreement right whereas let's say uh, you have uh, prepaid mobile or postpaid mobile uh prepaid prepaid any uh, like for example how we use postpaid mobile so do you have, do you have dish tv and ji do you have dish tv dish tv yes sir right is that prepaid or postpaid sir again that is also prepaid that's also prepaid you have electron electric connection at your home ah uh, han ji ha that is <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> so do, do, do you get like monthly supply and monthly billing yes that is right? after the after consuming that much of after consuming that services right yes, so in yes. your office you might have seen like office maintenance staff security staff right they are third party contractor right right sir so with them or maybe like your canteen services pantry services right we are generally we have a longer duration of the delivery of goods and services arrangement right in which over the period they deliver the goods and services and uh, you consume them or you build your assets or you satisfy your needs right and you pay them over the period of time based on the services or goods you consume from them so there we recognize the revenue over the period of time for example let's say you have paid uh, 10000 dollar for a cpa classes but those cpa classes will go over the period of time right as and when you uh, you receive the classes then accordingly i'll re i'll recognize the revenue for those income which i gain from the respective students Hmm? Okay. So that is called over the period of time. Control in context is defined as ability. What is control like? Here the emphasis has been given on when control has been transferred for the goods and services. So important thing to know over here is what is control? Right? Control is actually an ability to direct the use of the direct the use of any assets or any services or any goods. and obtain substantially all the remaining benefit from that asset is called control that means you can direct like if for example if you buy this pen right it's now you can consume it you can use it 
or you can give it to me or give it to anyone else for the use so it's completely on your discretionary whether you want to consume it you want to donate it you want to gift it you want to allow someone else to use it right so once you purchase it it's being in your physical position as well as in legal position then only that good is called being transferred control is being transferred right control also include the ability to prevent other entities from directing the use of and obtaining the benefit from the assets for example uh let's say you purchase a second hand car right for example i'm let's say i'm selling my bmw and you are purchasing the bmw car from me for let's say 15000 hmm? dollars so as in as on the date when we entered into an agreement right we transferred the property and i have given the key to you for the car right after that it's being your property right you can prevent me or any third person of using that car right because it's your property if you will you can give it to me for use it you can give it to your brother sister or any of friend for the use it but you have a right to prevent anyone else to touch that car right that shows you have a control over that assets so control over asset would be even can be evaluated in a different different manner for different different subject matter right it may be like you have authority to direct that right you have an uh, you have a position to uh, utilize that take the benefit of it and you can prevent someone else from usage of that right so these all are indicator that the control lies with you in these are the indicator that control is being transfer from one person to another person right makes sense uh -huh. control indicators include physical position that means i have given the key of my bmw and you have obtained the physical position of the car right second is right to payment for the asset hmm? and you have made the legitimate payment for the respective assets so now it's being your right legal title has been transferred for example if you are buying any property it's more important to register that property on your name right in some of the cases which is being uh, according to law it's being required to transfer the legal title so in that case of scenario if you have taken the legal title then it's your property right ownership is being transferred significant risk and reward has been transferred for example if i supplied the goods to your place and you were not there right and according to purchase order term or according to the agreement what we have if i ship the bill to your place not risk and reward is yours right if the risk and reward is yours then ownership is considered as yours right so these are few indicator not 100% all the time but you need to consider those indicator when you are evaluating the revenue recognition whether the control has been transferred or not make sense right sir okay so now jumping into more detail for point in time and over the period of time point in time risk and reward are transfer immediately upon the delivery of goods or completion of services that do not meet over the period of time recognition criteria first in asc asc 606 it's clearly laid out that first you need to look at the criteria mentioned in over the period of time if those criteria do not meet then it will be considered as point in time right so point in time is a residual approach main approach is over the period of time right what all things you need to keep in mind to consider any revenue to be recognized over the period of time first is customer has simultaneously received and consumed the benefit like for example uh you have laptop you have refrigerator you have washing machine you have ac at your home right and you have taken amc for all the appliances right so for amc you are taking the benefit over the period of time right then generally for 12 months you take amc right so uh for example let's say you have car anike anji do you have car yes sir right do you take roadside assistance no never okay so uh, do you take insurance right 
yes i take it sir. right so insurance is also you are taking the services insurance services you are taking over the period of time like any day during this 12 month for any reason if your car bumped up or any problem has happened with your car then insurance company is being liable to indemnify those losses and claims right exactly. so that means you are taking the benefit of insurance services over the period of time so the insurance company need to recognize the revenue over the period of time right so like for exactly. example in your office you have maintenance service department hmm? so which you have let's say outsourced to any third party agency they take care of all cleaning plumbing electronic all those kind of problems right so they are giving you services throughout the period of contract so their revenue is being recognized over the period of time second is entity performance create or enhance an assets that consumer control for example you given a contract to a labor labor contractor you have given to construct a building right so they are constructing building for you they are building an asset for you right they are giving their services over the period of 6 months 12 months 1 year 2 year 3 year depending on the project life right so they oh, they are giving you service to build the respective house office building whatsoever you are building right those services which they are delivering to you is being considered as an over the period of time because they are building an asset for you same way like development of software right so have you ever uh, been involved in any development of software development of software no no like generally i'm sure you might as an accountant you might have heard like generally those product development software development things yes, yes, yes. longer than their life longer than their expected time and yes right have you heard this from like it people or accounts people aaj hi suna hai maine aaj hi right so why because like these these in this kind of project also they are providing services to the company over the period of time for building and developing the software for the company so that's an asset for the company so one first was like you are consuming the services over the period of time then you will be recognizing the revenue over the period of time the second is they are building an asset for you over the longer period of time so those things also being recognized as over the period of time by the party who is delivering the service third is entity performance does not create an asset with an alternative use of the entity and the entity has an enforceable right to the payment for the performance completed to it for example let's say you have open a hospital right let's say you have open a hospital and to a car manufacturer you said build five ambulances specialized for my customers specialized for my patient with my brand name brand logo and everything so these are the you can say ambulance or ambulance vein they are making for you hmm? so they are dedicatedly making for you for example you need like uh, oxygen cylinder stuff you need some injection stuff you need some cooling box you need some other medical equipment in that like uh, you can say ambulance right so they have specially building it for you which no one else can use which no one else can use and they have enforceable right for you to make payment in that case of scenario the company who is building those ambulance or vanity cars vans for you right they will mm -hmm. they can recognize the revenue over the period of time when they are building the asset for you rather than at the time of delivery if they are building on specific item which is specific to you and they have enforceable right to collect the payment and if it is taking longer time then they can recognize the revenue over the period of time rather than waiting for the delivery and recognizing the revenue makes okay. sense jaise construction of building ka bhi kare yes koi usme payment plans hote hain different yes yes 1090 aapka 20 50 50 example ke taur koi bhi property flat le rahe hain kuch bhi le rahe hain तो उसके अंदर वो चीजें मतलब वो मतलब मैंने अगर 90 प्लान लिया एग्जांपल के तौर पे 
तो मैंने टेन परसेंटेज इनिशियली दे दिया वो अपना रेवेन्यू रिकॉग्नाइज कर लेगा टेन परसेंटेज राइट लेकिन यहाँ पे अब इस एग्जांपल में बिल्डर कैसे रिकॉग्नाइज कर सकते हैं क्या वो उसे एडवांस नहीं मानेगा क्योंकि उसने दे विल टेक एडवांस कलेक्शन इज डिफरेंट देन रिकॉग्निशन ऑफ रेवेन्यू यू कैन टेक फुल मनी इन एडवांस बट दैट वुड बी लाइंग इन योर लायबिलिटी एज एन अनर्न रेवेन्यू एज एन व्हेन यू प्रोवाइड द सर्विसेज यू कैन रिकॉग्नाइज द रेवेन्यू ओके कलेक्शन इज सेपरेट थिंग देन रेवेन्यू ठीक है हम सो What soever is not fall in any of these criteria is being considered as point in time revenue, and you need to recognize as and when risk and reward has been transferred or goods and services are being delivered to the respective consumer. Right. Mm-hmm. So here, like generally, we have seen in point in time two type of terminology. One is FOB shipping. Second is FOB destination. FOB shipping that means as and when I ship those goods. From my dockyard, so it is being your responsibility. Risk and reward has been transferred to you. So I'll mm-hmm. recognize the revenue as and when I ship from my place. Hmm? Second category generally have is FOB destination. That means my responsibility is to deliver at your doorstep, right? So in that case of scenario, I can recognize the revenue as and when the product is being delivered to the consumer doorstep. so during the transit period during the travel period during the transportation period if anything went wrong it is being my responsibility to make good for the customer if the agreement if the agreement is for delivery or shipment or destination right right hmm. so this is about revenue recognition point in time and over the period of time so quick note here is method to measure the progress to recognize the revenue over the period of time so here like you might have heard about uh, projected completion method mm-hmm. right you have seen heard about pocm method especially used in construction company major mm-hmm. right same way here we have seen like over the period of time recognition of revenue so how do you measure that like how much goods you have delivered how much services you have delivered right how do you measure that it may be input method or it can be output method so this is also you need to select in your accounting policy whether you are using input method output method and to your industry which one is a suitable method this is also an option to choose in accounting policy when you are drafting your accounting policy for revenue recognition what is output method output method is number of unit produced or delivered right so how this electricity company is charging to you based on number of unit they have delivered right yes right so how many number of unit you have delivered they will multiply the rate and some fixed charges and bill it to you and that is purely and purely output method right for example uh, uh let's say uh let's say you entered into a contract to build a 10 story building and your payment plan is on delivery of each stories each floors right so if consumer if your vendor is delivering one story then he can recognize the revenue for first story as and when he has delivered right respective unit so that is called output method second is input method majorly the company use input method when output is not certain or output is not assured so like outsourcing company right uh, uh, like for example eygds or uh, kgs or you can say like uh, bdo rice right or maybe many other offshore companies we have in india right so how they charge to their respective parent company generally what is the cost they have incurred plus their markup so right bpos kpos in which they supply manpower right number of hours you have filled in your time sheet costing of that overhead allocation on that plus their markup that's how they bill to their customer because their output is not certain what they want to get it done out of us hmm? and uh, sir, uh, wait a second wait a second a question 
कि आउटपुट क्यों सर्टेन नहीं है क्योंकि जितने आर्स वो बंदा काम करेगा मैंने मान लो टाइम एंड मटेरियल बेसिस पे भी चार्ज कर रहा हूँ जितने आर्स बंदा काम करेगा उतने आर्स का मैं चार्ज कर लूंगा उसको that is what input method is second method is for example if you are income tax expert right if i give you per income tax return filing rate let's say i give you 100 dollar for filing each individual income tax return so then it is output method if i hire you for 8 hours in a day and pay you based on number of hours you have clocked then it is input method Right? It depends on arrangement. It can be output arrangement. It can be input arrangement. Right? Makes sense. Okay. Hmm? Most of the time, why these offshore company have input method? Because they are the subsidiary of the main companies. They are not here to. They are not here to earn a profit separately. Like for example, EY US. And EYGDS India, so EYGDS India is actually a subsidiary of the EY US, right? Whatever the cost we are incurring, overhead we are incurring, uh, over the overhead they are incurring, and they are adding certain markup for the arms transaction, right? If, for example, you are a CPA, like other CPA firm wants to give you work, so there you can charge either on assignment basis. Or you can charge on hour basis. So it depends on which arrangement you enter into, and accordingly you will be recognizing the revenue. So generally, जितना goods वगैरह का होगा, वो output method पे ही होगा. Yes, goods are majorly output method. Services can be either output method or input method. ठीक है. Hmm. Now, this is all about. Five step model. Now we are learning few concepts relating to the revenue recognition. First one is principal and agent relationship. Right? Do you have any idea what is principal and agent relation? Who yes. is principal? Who is agent? Yeah, please help me understand. So there are very examples nowadays. Uh, any travel companies uh, mm -hmm. or or an airline companies, I would say. They have uh, a principal and agent relationship with the OTAs, where, just say, Expedia make my trip, okay, mm -hmm. and then others as well, Expedia in US and India as well, I think. So yeah. uh, there is a principal and agent relationship between these two, where they give a certain uh, 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 right to sell their goods or mm -hmm. like uh, their tickets. On their behalf and collect revenue on their behalf as well. So they act as an agent for these principal companies. Yeah, abs absolutely true. So here, principal is the owner of good. Principal yes. is the primary responsible of the goods to deliver to the end customer. Right. The principal have inventory risk, credit risk, and he he or she has authority to determine the price as well. So if Four things are lying with an individual. Then that individual is considered as a principal. If those things do not lie with those individual, then he or she may be an agent for the particular transaction. Right. So principal are the primary obligator or responsible to fulfill the performance obligation. Like airline company in your example, like whether it's Delta, KLM, uh, or for, uh, or you can say. uh what we have lufthansa american airlines those companies are primary responsible right whereas let's say sky scanner or maybe like expedia or maybe now google also provides such kind of services right so they are like intermediate who sell their tickets of the respective airlines so they are not primarily obligated to make sure like uh, like the customer is uh, appropriately traveling from one place to another place those are primary responsibility of the airline inventory risk is also lie with the airline whether the ticket will be sold or not sold it's being completely the risk of the respective airline right credit risk if they are giving uh, tickets on credit maybe let's say to the corporate so then credit risk is also lying with the airline lastly 
price determination that also lies with the respective airlines. All these intermediary just add their respective commission or which nowadays they say convenience fee, right? <laughs> so that's the commission agent. Hmm? Mm -hmm. If entity is a principal, they can recognize the revenue on a gross basis. If the entity is an agent, they need to recognize the revenue on net basis. What is gross basis? What is net basis? Any idea? Regan? Gross basis is um, minus of any commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, total price received. Total price received from the right. end customer. And right. when entity is agent, mm -hmm. recognize the revenue on net basis. Yeah. Net basis so then, is minus of the money they have transferred to the principal. Yes. And they can only uh, recognize the commission or the convenience fee like you have mentioned. Yes, commission and, income or convenience fee, absolutely. Yes. Right. So this is principal and agent relationship and how we need to recognize. If you are a principal, you will be recognized the revenue on a gross basis. If you are an agent, you will be recognizing the revenue on a So, this means that if you are an entity principal, although it is an agent, it has to pay the commission. But the revenue can recognize recognized revenue, the total amount that is received by the agent ke through, वो पूरे टोटल अमाउंट को कर सकता है या वो भी माइनस ऑफ एजेंट कमीशन पीस करके करेगा रिकॉग्नाइज नहीं वो तो एक्सपेंस में चला जाएगा दैट विल गो इन एक्सपेंस अच्छा सो दैट विल नॉट दैट यू विल रिकॉग्नाइज द फुल रेवेन्यू एंड कमीशन एजेंट वुड बी योर एक्सपेंस सेल्स कमीशन एक्सपेंसेस सेलिंग एंड जनरल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एक्सपेंसेस ठीक है वो रेवेन्यू को रिड्यूस कहीं पर भी नहीं करेंगे नो नो Right. Okay. Hmm. Next topic we have is loss contract. What is loss contract? There are certain contract. Sometimes we, we say a strategic contract, or sometime early stage we entered into a contract without knowing much about like the prospective future cost involved in it. Right, and we end up having loss in those contract. Right. So for example, like uh, I am a new uh construction company right and i filled a tender for let's say for reliance or tata or maybe for any big project company to build let's say a uh, road project right let's say uh government of india wants to build a road from delhi to jaipur let's say for example right for that they have given a tender and let's say Tata has won that tender, right? After that, Tata has invited for some contractor. Hmm? And I'm a small contractor. I've just started my work in the real estate business or construction company. And I have applied for that, right? In my application, I have given a costing, which is lesser than the other, you can say contractor who has been applied, right? In that, at that point of time, probably I may not have experience in working in, let's say, road kind of projects, right? I do not know all the note, all those nuts, bolts, and nitty gritties of that kind of project. And I have given a low cost. And luckily, I got the tender. Let's say I got a tender for uh, $1 million to build a five kilometer road or five miles road. Hmm? Now I have started building that and after some months I realize there is a problem like price of charcoal has increased right and the price of raw material has increased and there is so much noise on the way right and the price of other things which I have not considered maybe labor cost or maybe strike of the labor or other nonsense possible in this business I have not considered. And it assumed that I will be end up incurring uh, $1.2 million. So my revenue is $1 million and my cost, estimated cost of this project, let's say this project is for two years, hmm, is $1.2 million. So I know it right now. So I need to recognize, as per ASC 606, I need to recognize $200,000 of loss right now. Because I know I'll be end up incurring 200,000 loss in this project. So as and when you know, 
it's being your responsibility to recognize that loss immediately right that is those contracts which in future will end up giving you loss are called loss contract make sense aur ye over the period of time mein usko allocate karenge no loss you need to recognize immediately loss you need to recognize immediately but the revenue you can recognize over the period of time so iski jo entry dalegi ek apna ek loss yes due to due to contract yeah contract, contract loss account debit to the respective contract so you need so to that's... charge to the expense yeah ch- charge debit kar diye expense ko credit kar denge hum क्रेडिट हम किस अकाउंट को करेंगे सर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट मतलब सो हियर इफ यू सी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट रेवेन्यू is let's say 1 million dollar of hmm? estimated contract cost is let's say 1.2 million dollar right so contract loss is 200000 dollar right this loss you need to recognize now so contract loss count debit to profit and loss account Two hundred thousand, right? So this will be reducing your what do you call uh, retained earning. But sir, यहाँ पे तो contract loss account debit तो हो ही गया ये तो P and L में जाएगा वो तो हाँ so P and L से कहाँ पे जाएगा वो P and L से कहाँ पे जाएगा नहीं sir but P and P and L को ही credit हो गया और P and L को ही debit हो गया ये प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस से रियल से रिटेन अर्निंग से कम हो जाएगा अच्छा रिटेन अर्निंग सो रिटेन अर्निंग जो करंट ईयर का रिटेन अर्निंग का पोर्शन होता है व्हाट इज दैट दैट्स करंट ईयर प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट राइट करंट ईयर का कुछ लॉस है सो दैट विल गो टू रिटेन अर्निंग थ्रू प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट ओनली राइट आर यू विद मी मतलब ये मेरा मेरे को ये तो समझ में आ गया कि डेबिट कर देगा टू हंड्रेड के ठीक है डेबिट पी एंड एल के अंदर डेबिट में चला गया लेकिन ये एंट्री कहा है रिटेन अर्निंग तो मेरा पोर्शन बैलेंस शीट का हो गया ना हाँ तो बैलेंस शीट के आइटम को रिड्यूस कर देगा ही हाँ रिटेन अर्निंग को रिड्यूस कर देगा यस और दैट इज लॉस ना सो लॉस विल गो लाइक रिटेन अर्निंग में क्या होता है ओपनिंग रिटेन अर्निंग प्लस में करंट ईयर पी एन एल so opening if you have let's say 1 million dollar of retain earning right so this will be 200000 we go here and your closing retain earning will be 800000 dollar so sir so p and l se already jab p and l aap finalize karoge 
तो वो तो जाएगा ही जाएगा ना वैसे ही जाएगा एंट्री डालने की फिर बट डेबिट क्रेडिट कुछ करोगे हाँ करेंगे बट मुझे ऐसा लग रहा है कि हम कोई और अकाउंट नहीं यूज करेंगे आई थिंक हम हम सर हम इसका प्रोविजन नहीं क्रिएट करेंगे इसकी प्रोविजन की एंट्री जानी चाहिए मेरे हिसाब से तो नहीं If you have bad debts expense, hmm? for which uh, you have not created any proof. Sir, me, we get around. One second. One second. If you have bad debt expense for which you have not created provision, but you are sure that party is not paying you, so what general entry will be? तो मेरे हिसाब से मेरा मेरी जो एंट्री मेरे हिसाब से बनती है ना तो वो तो बनेगी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट की कॉस्ट डेबिट करो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कॉस्ट अकाउंट डेबिट एंड देन टू प्रोविजन फॉर एस्टिमेटेड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट लॉसेस एक प्रोविजन बनाना पड़ेगा We have no no uh, uh, no possibility of recovering that loss in future. No? So if you credit the provision, right, then provision will set into your liability account. Ah. Uh, when you will re uh, uh, when you will reverse the liability, when you have future income, then only you can reverse the liability. But here there is no possibility of future income. That's the reason it has to be directly going to the P N L. तो तो में ये तो ये डेबिट चला ही गया ना टू हंड्रेड के डेबिट करते सो इफ इफ इट इज मेकिंग कंफ्यूजन टू यू इफ दिस इज गिविंग यू कंफ्यूजन देन यू कैन यूज डायरेक्टली रिटेन अर्निंग अकाउंट बट आइडली इट नेम इट पी एन एल विच विल गो टू द रिटेन अर्निंग लाइक दिस Instead of liability, it will go to retain earning as a loss. ठीक है सर, right? ठीक. Okay, so next is contract cost. Contract cost are those cost which you incurred to obtain that contract, right? For example, tender fees, legal fees, lawyer fees, CPA fees. right engineer fees for building all those things right so those costs if you expect that you can recover those costs or you can avail the benefit of the cost you have incurred over the period of contract then you can capitalize if you feel you will you cannot recover the benefit of those costs over the period of time then you will expense it hmm? so it can be sales commission tender fee legal fee cpa fee engineering fees like designer fees right project if you are taking the help of uh, you can say any designer for building the project kind of thing right so those all things are comes under the contract cost incremental cost to obtain the contract should be recognized as asset if and only if these conditions met otherwise you will be expensed out first one is entity expect to recover those cost in future first and foremost important thing is you are expected to receive uh, to recover those values in future right second thing is contract period over which that cost is expected to be recovered is more than one year if it is less than one year then you will be expensing off you will not be recognizing that as an asset right if both the conditions are met then the company can recognize the contract cost incurred as asset and amortize on a systematic basis over the period of its recovery 
of the benefit otherwise expense of as income last thing is cost generated to enhance or cost generate uh, generated or enhanced resources of the entity that will be used in satisfying or in continuing the satisfying performance obligation of the future only those costs will be considered here so two things you need to keep in mind to consider to capitalize any cost is one it is being directly related to the project and you can expect future benefit of the cost you have incurred from that in the respective project and that project is for more than 12 month more than one year if it is less than one year then you will be expensing it off right and how do you amortize over the systematic basis over the period of time right any doubt here contract cost uh -huh. no contract cost can be include direct material direct labor allocation of overhead cost that is explicitly chargeable to the customer under the contract and other cost that is incurred only because the entity has entered into the contract what are the cost you need to exclude you should not be including in the contract cost is general administration expense right cost that was not reflected in the price of the contract that is waste of material or labor cost hmm? cost that relates to the past performance that is sunk cost hmm? cost which entity cannot distinguish so those costs you should not be including the cost which you will be including in the contract cost is only those costs which are directly related to the respective project and for which you have future visibility to be gaining the benefit of those cost over the period of time otherwise the, otherwise एक्सक्लूड करने वाला तो मैं सारा एक्सपेंस आउट कर दूंगा एक्सपेंस एज एन वेन इट इज इनकर राइट इफ इट इज जनरल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एक्सपेंस इफ यू आर नॉर्मल वियर एंड टीयर एक्सपेंस इफ लेट से यू मेड अ प्रोटोटाइप राइट और यू है सैंपल प्रोजेक्ट और इफ यू है सैंपल प्रोडक्ट फॉर द टू शो केस सो ऑल दोज थिंग्स इफ दोज ऑल आर लाइक जनरल कॉस्ट विच यू विल बी डूइंग अदरवाइज फॉर एनी अदर कस्टमर then those costs should not be considered in the contract cost for example you have made a prototype and you are visiting different different customer to showcase those prototype then in that case of scenario that prototype you have not made for specific entity it is for general use to the to showcase to the different different customer so then in that case for that prototype cost you will not be charging to the contract cost right makes sense uh mm -hmm. next is impairment loss on the contract cost capitalized to the extent that the carrying amount of an asset recognized exceed so if you have capitalized the contract cost right and in future in future for example there is no benefit of the cost you have capitalized then it is always good to impair that asset right so impair the asset on the remaining amount of the consideration that the entity expect to receive in exchange of the goods and services which the asset relate minus minus the cost that directly that relate directly to provide those goods and services and that do not be recognized as an expense for example you have incurred $10000 to obtain any tender specific to obtaining a tender and at that that time you thought this $10000 will be recovered over the period of 5 year of the contract hmm? so two year has been done right two year has been done and you have charged 2000 dollar each year as an amortization expense from that contract as now in third year your tender is getting cancelled right for any reason your tender is getting cancelled and you will not be avail the benefit in future so it's good to impair those asset and recognize all the losses in this year makes sense mm. right so this is about contract cost and creation of assets and impairment loss now coming to the contract liability so there might be possibility that you have future obligations 
for the contract in which you have entered. So obligation to transfer the goods and services to the customer for which the entity has received the consideration, like advance you have received from the customer. Hmm? So last time we were discussing uh, this, when we were discussing about this breakage concept, right? At that point of time, we have seen like the amount you have received in advance, but the redemption is happening later on, right? Same way, for example, you have given, you have given, let's say you want to develop the website for any business you want to start, right? And you have given, let's say, $500 advance to the developer, right? So does the developer recognize that $500 as a revenue or not? Answer is no, right? At the time of collection of advance from the customer, is it is cash account debit to advance from customer, which is your liability, right? Later on, once developer develop the respective website and deliver it to you, then he will, he or she will recognize the revenue. So what will be the entry at that point of time? Advance from customer account debit to uh, sales account. Sales account, right? So that, that's how they will be recognizing the revenue and adjusting the customer balance, right? Next is contract asset. Contract asset is actually a right to consider in exchange of goods and services already delivered. So contract assets are other than account receivable. For example, capital work in progress for material purchase and development of any construction site or hour incurred in the IT project by the entity but not yet built. So here, uh, like for example, construct, construction contract, right? In construction contract, for example, uh, Aniket and Kamal has entered into an agreement in which Aniket said, make a 10 story building and this particular piece of land for me, right? And we agreed that on each story, you'll be paying $1 million to Kamal, right? That's it. That's how let's we agree. And now Kamal have started work he, Kamal has started incurring the cost. Kamal has started incurring the labor hour. Kamal has started incurring the overhead cost, right? Let's say after one year, or let's say after three months, year end comes closer to us. Let's say we have started an agreement in August and December is year end. So by year end, I'm close to completing one story, but I'm not completed yet. So as I am not completed yet, I am not billing to you. Right, but where do I account for this amount which I am incurring? That will go into the work in progress, work in progress for the capital assets account debit to the respective expenditure which I am incurring. That means I am building an inventory to sell it to you. Make sense? So that is my contract asset. And when the one story is being done. I will bill it to you and I will get the right to collect from you. So that's what the arrangement we have made, let's say, right? At the time of billing, what I'll be doing? What entry I'll be making? Aniket account debit to inventory, right? Which I build. Aniket account debit to inventory. And then the sales entry we will be making, what will be that? Aniket account debit to sales, right? So let's go into the journal entry. One second. Sorry, I got confused. ER account, account debit to sales. Let's get into the journal entry. Let's get into the journal entry here. One second. So here, first, when I am building the asset. Right? At that point of time, I'll be making WIP account debit to all my expenses and purchases. Let's say it is $1 million. $1 million. $1 million, this is my cost, right? And after that, like after a month, I have completed. So what I'll be doing, finish good, 
account debit to WIP and I'll transfer this 1 million to finish good. Right. Now I'm selling it to you. What will be the entry for sales? Most of good sold account debit to to FG right hmm. and for F the sales FG care, FG care. finish goods hmm. right and then what will be the entry for sale AR account debit to sales right let's say this is for 1.2 million dollar this is the sales entry i have made right make sense hmm? and then when you make the payment what will be the entry cash account debit to ar right 1200 Right? Make sense? When you make the payment, cash account debit to account receivable. Sir, why expense account ko credit kyo kar rakha hai aabhe? Because inventory built kar raha. Huh? Because I am building inventory. That is the reason expense accounts are credited. Or you can say cash. If you are making payments, yeah, uh, simple. Hai. For example, if you are purchasing a material, like what will be the general entry you will be making? Purchase account okay. debit to cash, uh -huh. right? And now those purchases you have been utilized for building a, uh, for constructing a building, and that building is your WIP. So WIP account debit to purchases. WIP uh, account of purchase account ko credit kar dunga. Like it depends what general entry you are using. So there are two things possible. Two scenario could be possible. One is like let's say you are making a purchases of raw material. So what will be the general entry? Purchases account debit to cash. Let's say you are not taking on credit, you are making cash payment, right? Let's say five hundred thousand hmm? dollars. Second, let's say you have given labor cost. Labor cost debit to cash. Let's say this is four hundred thousand hmm? dollars. And then you have incurred other expense. Let's say you purchase uh, some nuts, bolts, tools, electric item, plumbing item, right? Which is not the main main items, maybe like tiles or something like that, right? So there other expenses, account debit, let's say hundred thousand dollars to cash, which you have made the payment for. You. So now this 500, this 400, this $100,000, this $1 million is sitting on your PNA, right? But at year end, is it your expenditure? At year end, is it your expenditure? Mm. The answer is no. Mm. At year end, this is not your expenditure, right? So this is the investment you have made for building the capital, right? So capital work in progress account, sorry, account debit to, you will be reversing purchases, labor cost, expenses. That will go $1 million, right? 
other way of accounting is other way of accounting is let's say you will you can directly say capital work in progress account debit to cash for five hundred thousand dollars. This is for let's say raw material, right? Same C I capital work in progress account debit to cash. This is for your labor. How much is four hundred? Four hundred, right? The next way is. Capital work in progress account debit to cash that is for other expense hundred. So either way of accounting entry you can choose. It depends on like how how your company like accounting system. So both are uh, acceptable option, but at the end. It will reflect into capital working progress. Make sense? Mm. So that is the reason I have mentioned this. Right? Anjay. Mm -hmm. So this is about contract asset. Whenever you have contract assets, so you need to disclose all these things. What is the contract asset balance? How much is the cost you have incurred? How much is the contract obligation? How much is the receivable? And all those things. Okay. So next topic here is contract receivable. Contract receivable are unconditional right to receive the consideration when no further performance obligation is due. That means once you deliver the story respective story then you have unconditional right to receive the money right if you go back to our example fourth journal entry fourth journal entry which we have made here so here you can say instead of pr it's a contract receivable so when it is a long term contract instead of pr we use the terminology contract receivable make sense oh. Right. Right. record right. So this is about long-term contracts. Now coming back to the breakage concept, which we were discussed in last class in detail, right? So maybe again, like quick reiteration of those uh, things. Sometime a customer may not exercise all their contractual right often referred to as breakage, like loyalty reward points, points, payback points, discount coupon. We discussed in detail about the reward points, right? We did, we did one uh, example as well. Same is the case of discount coupons as well. Like for example, Domino's discount offer, Paytm also you have seen, seen a lot of discount offer, right? Many restaurant chains, they also give a lot of discount offer, right? which management expect that it will not redeem and will get expire without a redemption. So in that case of scenario, company do those mathematical calculation based on their historical trend and their current expectation and recognize the revenue accordingly. So A point, if you see, recognize the expected breakage amount as a revenue in proportion to the pattern in the rights exercised by the customer. That means whatsoever you expect in future that people will not redeem those points or will not avail the benefit of the discounts and offer you have given as a material right. You can recognize the revenue of the same based on your best judgment. Second is recognize the expected breakage amount as revenue when the likelihood of the customer exercising its remaining right become remote. That means it is extremely low likelihood that the customer will redeem those points. At that point of time, you can recognize the revenue. Based on a breakage formula, you arrived. 
right recognition of breakage under two party arrangement so here also breakage also uh you need to calculate based on type of arrangement it can be tri party arrangement or it can be two party arrangement so for example you know lifestyle that's a chain of uh you can say uh apparel brand right lifestyle are you been to lifestyle kind of mall yeah aniket yes sir right have you seen any like multi story or oh, uh multi brand store like pantaloons yes right? sir yes sir right so when you go to the pantaloon when you go to the lifestyle they also give you reward point card right right sir these days they also give you reward point card right so in right. that case of scenario that company have direct relation with you and they will be managing all the reward points for you directly so it is a two party agreement that means customer and the company right or there could be three party agreement which we discuss in the last class tri party agreement you have debit card you have credit card right and those card are from your bank right and the bank at the back end have an agreement with the different company like loyalty rewards company payback company paypal company or builders company so they at the back end have an arrangement with those company to manage the reward point for their customer mm -hmm. right okay. so now look at first point under two party arrangement record the defer revenue when the right issued until it redeem for example like ola right ola money right and ola will also give you the referral bonus right if you refer any new customer they will give you referral bonus so in that case of scenario you have direct arrangement with the ola lifestyle they are directly managing their reward point right dominos they give you the discount coupon and they manage their discount coupon at their own in that case of scenario it is a two party agreement and record all the revenue which you are expecting to be receive in future as a deferred revenue so here here is the thing for example dominos dominos has when you went and buy a dominos pizza they have given you 50% discount voucher on the next purchase right at that point of time it's a material option they have given to you that in future if you want you can buy the pizza at 50% discount from us right makes sense simple vanilla example right. in this case the future cost of the material right dominoes will be calculating today okay right and proportionate to that cost revenue they will defer so maybe let me draw an example मतलब आज का मैंने एक साढ़े तीन सौ रुपए का पिज्जा सेल किया उसने ठीक है उस पिज्जा के ऊपर मैंने फ्यूचर के पचास परसेंट सेम पिज्जा के ऊपर या कोई भी पिज्जा लेने पर पचास परसेंट की कॉस्ट जो है आ, मैं कह रहा हूँ कि बियर करेगा डोमिनोज आपको यही वाला एक सौ सत्तर में मिलेगा अगर आप दोबारा खरीदते हो ठीक है तो एक की जो कॉस्ट होगी या एक रुपए की जो कॉस्ट होगी वो हम डेफर करेंगे ये कहना चाहते हैं I think yeah, you will, sir. Yes, yes. So pizza first pizza you purchase, let's say for dollar ten, right? And you got discount coupon, fifty percent for next purchase until ninety days. Ninety right? days. Let's say within. Ninety days. Hmm? So, next visa two they will be selling at dollar five, right? So the two visa, the two visa sell price is fifteen dollar, mm -hmm. right? So here let's say to make those two visa, they have cost of let's say cost of let's say ten dollar. To make two pizza, right? So this fifteen dollar, they will be recognizing seven point five dollar here, and they will be recognizing seven point five dollar in future. 
So when they receive this ten dollar out of this seven point five, they will be recognizing now, and two point five they will defer revenue, and this will be recognized in the future sales. Make sense? If it is a two party agreement. Yes, sir. Eight seconds. Abhi yeah. aapit दस डॉलर की आपने सेल करी ठीक है दस डॉलर पे कहा कि एक कूपन ले लो पचास परसेंट का नेक्स्ट सेल करेंगे जब नाइन्टी डेज विद इन नाइन्टी डेज इसे रिडीम करते हो तो अगला दस सौ रुपए वाला जो है वो पांच सौ रुपए में मिल जाएगा ठीक है तो टोटल सेल माई टोटल सेल इज फिफ्टीन डॉलर फॉर टू पीजा माई टोटल सेल वैल्यू फॉर टू पीजा इज फिफ्टीन डॉलर अच्छा मैं ये ज़ूम करके चलूँगा कि हाँ that is what you need to estimate right now अच्छा ठीक है मैं estimate कर रहा हूँ that is what you need to estimate if like the hundred percent people are availing that benefit hmm. right there also you can do the breakage but just to keep it simple to understand okay. the deferred revenue concept we are assuming that the person will avail Okay. In that case of scenario, you will be recognizing seven point five dollar revenue today at the time of sale of first pizza, and at the time of second pizza sale, you will be recognizing seven point five dollar, which is five dollar collection and two point five dollar, which you have deferred earlier. Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. ठीक है स्टडी पीपल बाय पीजा से बाय वन थाउजेंड पीजा फर्स्ट ऑप्शन राइट Out of this one thousand, only second option avail is by the ten people. This is the actual scenario. This is the breakage concept. अच्छा अब इसको ऐसे समझता हूँ मैं बिल्कुल दस डॉलर की जो उस समय सेल करी पूरा दस डॉलर. अच्छा let 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 me finish. एक 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 � कैश अकाउंट डेबिट टू सेल एंट्री कर करके ये तो रिकॉर्ड कर दो इसमें कोई वो नहीं है लेकिन जो ढाई डॉलर का एस्टिमेट निकल के आया वो एक अलग अकाउंट क्रिएट होगा जनरल एंट्री के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से जहां पे मैं उसे डालूंगा एस्टिमेशन अकाउंट डेबिट नो 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 राइट यहां पे जाएगा फर्स्ट टाइम व्हेन यू सेलिंग पिज्जा वन कैश अकाउंट डेबिट टू सेल to deferred revenue ten dollar one point five dollar two point five dollar this will be the general entry at the time of first pizza sale second pizza sale at that point of time cash count debit how much five dollar right deferred revenue two point five dollar Two sales, seven point four. That's how you'll be making accounting and cost. So this this is your unearned revenue. This is your deferred revenue, which you'll be deferring for second piece. Make sense? Okay. Why the TK is so low? Because let me complete this second option, then it will come with more confidence. So practically, practically for for one month, the Domino's has let's say sold ten one thousand pizza at the rate of ten dollar each, right? And they have made a collection of ten thousand dollar. So this is collection, right? And in future, they expect ten people out of this one thousand will avail the benefit, and they will buy the pizza at five dollar each. The future collection will be fifty out of this option. 
right so now only for the 50 piece uh, only for the 10 pizza that means 10 plus 10 right 10 plus 10 they got total revenue of 15 how much is the total revenue they receive for 20 pizza 300 right so here only they need to make 150 and 150 arrangement but for rest of the thing as per the breakage if they are estimated breakage is this that 99 percent people will not avail that means they will be out of this one 10,000 collection they will be recognizing the revenue for 9,900 immediately Right? Yes, no? Yes, sir. As per the breakage, they assume 99 people, 99 percent people will not avail this benefit. Only 1 percent people will avail. So, accordingly for 9,900, there is no issue. Right? Only issue is with those 10 people who are availing. Calculation is required for those 10 people who will be availing the benefit. Right? So for those 10 people out of this $100 revenue, they will be recognizing 75 here and they will be deferring 25 for later on. Right? Right? So far so good? Mm -hmm. So here, one thing I did math wrong, here it will be 150. Here it will be 150, 100 plus 50, so which is 75 and 75. So they will be recognizing at the time of original sale 9,975 as revenue and 25 revenue they will defer it. And they will be receiving 50 as a collection, right? They will be receiving 50 as a collection plus 25 of the deferred revenue. So that's how at the time of second pizza sale, they will be recognizing for $75. Make sense? Sorry, say that again. I can also go through this again. I can also go through this again. That's how this 150 is coming. Right? So, when you have two party arrangement, you will be deferring the revenue. You will be deferring the revenue. And when you have tri-party arrangement, then how you will be dealing? And under the three-party arrangement, recognize the financial liability to provide the payment to third party when the customer redeemed the card. So here, you will be recognizing the liability as and when points are being issued and for toward the third party who is managing the respective points for you. Right. In that case, it is very simple. As a bank, we need to recognize the financial liability and put the money in escrow account. Right. Okay. Next is contract balance. Contract balance, this is again for the long-term contract. This is again for the long-term contract where we have contract asset, contract liability, contract receivable. So in the contract balance also you may have. So that may be your receivable, your payable, or maybe, uh, one second. yeah. So that may be your receivable, payable, or your contract asset. So what you need to disclose is opening balance, transaction during the year, and the closing balance. It is changed during the period. So those disclosures are being required for the contract balances. So this might be more suitable here.
right before the breaking chart right then last one is the remaining performance obligation that means if you have any performance obligation which is pending or you need to satisfy in future right you need to disclose the aggregate amount of the transaction price allocated to those performance obligation that is unsatisfied or partially satisfied at the end of the reporting period that means all unearned revenue you need to disclose separately an explanation of when the entity expect to recognize the revenue of or the satisfaction of the or partly satisfaction of the performance obligation in future so for the performance obligation according to the contract for which you have received the money but you have not served those performance obligation you need to disclose what all performance obligations are pending and when you are expecting those performance obligations to be complete right for example a building contract you have received let's say 1 million dollar advance and you have 50% completed the building now you are using percentage completion method so you can recognize the revenue 50% but the balance amount which you have for that performance obligation you have not yet satisfied right so you need to disclose those pending balances and the expected timeline when you will be satisfying those performance obligation in future right makes sense mm -hmm. thank you now coming to the disclosure part contract with customer what do you need to disclose in a contract revenue recognized from the contract with customer separate from other source like financing source or other income interest income right those thing always you need to be separately disclose in the main income from the respective contract second is if there is any impairment loss which you have recognized on contract asset or if there is any provision for doubtful debt or if there is any bad debts those thing also you need to separately disclose or disaggregated revenue so this is being required mandatorily for the issuer but not for non issuer it is not mandatory disclosure to disclose disaggregated revenue so do you know what is disaggregated revenue any idea <laughs> any idea what is disaggregated revenue no nee, sir no nee. bilkul okay so disaggregated revenue is basically let's say uh let's say uh 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 let's say you are a company like hp hmm? hp and you entered into an agreement with a company let's say called ey or essenture right such a big company to deliver them the laptops let's say every month you will be delivering 100 laptops to them so along with the laptop or within the laptop four things you are delivering you are delivering hardware right you are delivering operating system you are delivering windows right and you are delivering a uh, backpack hmm? and you are giving antivirus so you are providing five things in a package oh. and in 100 unit every month to a company like ey or essential right in that case of scenario as a company like hp you need to showcase disaggregated revenue that means how much revenue you have earned from sale of hardware how much revenue you have earned from sale of operating system how much revenue you have earned from sale of windows how much revenue you have earned on sale of backpack and how much revenue you have earned from antivirus so that is called disaggregation of revenue in the different revenue line item right that could be one way the other thing is for example uh we entered like hp has entered into an agreement with essential globally or ey globally so ey or essential globally let's say have operation in 10 countries right how much laptop hp is delivering to india ey how much laptop hp is delivering to ey middle east ey south africa ey us ey canada geographically so that is also called disaggregated revenue analysis it can be product wise it can be service wise 
or it can be geography wise depend on which one is more suitable so to the segregated ho gaya na ye disaggregated kaise ho and disaggregated is the term body which is being used to matlab product wise har ek cheez wise dikhana hoga ha for issuer it is mandatory for non issuer it's not mandatory to ye to matlab ye aap wahan ke dikhane ko keh rahe hai na ye jo notes to the accounts mein yes 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 absolutely in notes to accounts right same way contract balances performance obligation pending transaction price allocated to remaining remaining performance obligation these all are disclosure requirement right in addition to that significant judgment you have taken in entire asc 606 in the revenue recognition criteria those all significant judgment is also being mandatory disclosure requirement hmm? significant judgment and changes in the judgment made in applying the guidance to those contract are being required to be disclosed for performance obligation satisfied at point in time and the entity should disclose the significant judgment made in evaluating when a customer obtain a contract contract or control or promise of goods and services so like initially we discuss first we need to evaluate the over the period of time if those three criteria do not meet then we we will say the revenue is being recognized at point in time right so those evaluation and the basis of your justification and the arrangement with the customer you need to make the disclosure of that in the notes to accounts why you reached to the conclusion that revenue is being recognized at point in time not over the period of time that you need to those in the notes to accounts right next Take is for performance obligation the entity satisfy over the time performance obligation which are satisfied over the time disclose the method which you have used whether you use input method you used output method you use most likely method or you used expected value method those all methods you need to disclose in the notes to accounts to provide the faithful depiction of the transfer of goods and services to the user of financial statement right, right. third thing is transaction price and the amount allocated to the respective performance obligation or the method which you have used in allocation of the transaction price whether it put method output method or the assumption you have considered in determining the transaction price all those things you need to disclose in the notes to accounts next is performance obligation disclosure required for the performance obligation when entity typically satisfy its performance obligation right so you need to disclose in your notes to accounts like your revenue recognition policy when generally you recognize the revenue upon shipment upon delivery upon dispatch upon destination right upon the providing of services rendering of services or upon completion of services right this is the mandatory disclosure required in the notes to accounts or you can say in your accounting policy section right significant payment terms the normal payment terms or do you keep for your business that also you need to disclose nature of goods and services that entity have promised or in which the entity do the business those also need to be disclosed obligation for return refunds or similar obligation if you have and type of warranties and related obligation you provide so all those things you need to disclose in your accounting policy and notes to accounts fourth is remaining performance obligation so disclosure relating to the remaining performance obligation so you need to disclose only if expected to be remaining for more than one year if the performance obligation expected to be delivered within one year then it's not required to disclose but if it is being taking more than one year time then the disclosure is required if disclosure is required what you need to disclose aggregate amount of the transaction price allocated to the performance obligation that are unsatisfied or partially satisfied an explanation to when the entity expect to recognize the revenue when those performance obligation entity expect to satisfy and they will be recognizing the revenue right 
Next is additional disclosure, which is recommendatory for non issuer and mandatory for issuer. So keep in mind, in question you may say you may say like A Limited is an issuer, <coughs> then it is mandatory. But if they in the question they say it's non issuer, then these are not mandatory. Right in question when you practice. They may confuse you with the issuer and non-issuer. What is being mandatory for issuer? I have clearly mentioned over here. What is not mandatory, recommended, recommendatory for uh, non-issuer? That also I have mentioned clearly here. Right? So that when it comes to question, you can clearly bifurcate what is mandatory for the issuer and what is not mandatory for the non-issuer. Hmm? First one is judgment. Sorry, uh, sorry. Any assets required to recognize from the cost to obtain or fulfillment of the contract. That is contract asset. We need to disclose separately for the issuer. For non-issuer, it's not mandatory required. Hmm? And the judgment you have made in determining the amount of cost incurred and obtaining or fulfillment of the contract. What all judgment you have made? Methods you have used for amortizing over the period of time of that contract asset, whether it's state line method, usage based method, input method, output method, those method also you need to disclose separately. Last third one is closing balance of the asset. And lastly, the expense you have recognized as an amortization expense or the impairment loss you have recognized for the contract asset that also you need to disclose separately. Right here, we'll be discussing in detail dissegregated revenue. Right, the disclosure which we discussed earlier required, but what exactly is dissegregated revenue has been mentioned over here. So, dissegregated revenue disclosure means you need to disclose the revenue at the segregated level, at the different, different uh, line item level. It can be by type of revenue. Right? It may be for sale of product or it may be sale of services. You can bifurcate this much revenue is from sale of product and this much revenue is from sale of service. That is also called disaggregation of revenue. It can be by geographical location, how much revenue you have received from India, US, Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, if the company is providing services to the different geographical location. Hmm? Right. Third one is based on market or type of customer, right? How much revenue you have recognized from government? How much revenue you have recognized from the non-government customer? How much revenue you have recognized from original equipment manufacturer? How much revenue you have recognized from the retailers, right? So that's, that's also the way to disaggregate the revenue. Next is type of contract. There are certain contracts which are fixed in nature. How much revenue you have recognized from the fixed type pricing? How much revenue you have recognized from the variable type pricing? Right? Contract duration. How much revenue you have recognized from the short term contract? And how much revenue you have recognized from the long term contract? Time of transfer. How much revenue you have recognized from point in time? And how much your revenue you have recognized for over the period of time contract? It can be from sales channel like direct D2C, B2B. B2C, B2G, right? Those all things also disaggregate and separately analyze and present into the financial statement. Here is one example. For example, let's say a company, uh, Pocter & Gamble. Have you heard the name of Pocter & Gamble? Anji. Have you heard the company Pocter & Gamble? P &G, Anji. Right? Anji. Let's assume this is Pocter & Gamble company. Hmm? Pocter & Gamble company, they provide different kind of product one to the consumer like it may be beauty product it may be lifestyle product right second they also provide industrial product let's say uh, you can say chemicals to the medical industry or pharmaceutical industry right then let's say they provide supplies also to the companies for example like hand shops to the company at a big container level right so these are th three segments in which they will providing the, uh, you can say, um, uh, product and services to the respective customer. Hmm? So they are providing this customer, uh, they are providing this product and services in North America, Europe and Asia. So that's how you, like how this disaggregated analysis will look. So this is an example for that, right? So first, 
consumer product, industrial product, or supply. These are the three segments, right? And they are giving it to North America, Europe, and Asia. So that is further sub, uh, you can say, sub particle of it, or further disaggregation of it, right? And then their major product is X, Y, and Z, right? Their timing of revenue, they are receiving how much revenue from the product service on point in time, how much revenue they are recognizing over the period of time. This is how like high level look and feel of the disaggregated revenue analysis. Make sense? It does. Hmm? So next one is contract balance. So for revenue on long-term contract. So there might be a long-term contract in which there are certain balances to it, right? Which you have not recognized in the current period. For example, construction contract, infra project. Let's say you have to build railway lines, roads, dams, right? ID implementation project. Just keep those things in mind and then let's understand the theory over there. First one is performance obligation satisfied over the period of time of more than one year or operating cycle of the entity. Revenue of the long-term contract is recognized over the period of time when following three criteria are being met. First one is consumer simultaneously receive and consume the benefit. Entity performance create and enhance the assets of the organization, right? An entity use the indicator or control to determine its customer gain the control like we discussed earlier. If any of these three criteria are met and the contract is for more than 12 months, then you can recognize the revenue over the period of time. So entity, uh, sorry, example, I think we have discussed earlier also. If none of the three criteria are met, then recognize the revenue on point in time. So which we have discussed earlier also, when we are discussing point in time or over the period of time, same criteria here. Now, entity must, uh, must be able to reasonably estimate its progress. So entity must be able to reasonably estimate the progress. That is something you need to keep in mind when you are planning to recognize the revenue over the period of time. Appropriate measurement methods. So which we have discussed earlier, input method, output method, same also disclosure is required. If the progress cannot be estimated, then entity can use point in time approach or recognize the revenue on percentage of cost incurred, which is POCM method. Next concept here is installation sale or higher purchase. Have you heard about higher purchase arrangement? Or installation sales. Do you remember those things? Yes, sir. Right? Same huh? Sorry? Say the name. Name is I think we have we have studied in school days, right? Higher yes, purchase, yes. installment sales, right? Yes. Uh can just give me two minutes. Uh I'll take some water and uh, maybe we can continue after that. Just give me two minutes. Yes. Yes, shall we continue? Yes. yes. So installment sale. So here is the difference. US gap and IFRS. This is the different in US gap and this is different in differently treated in IFRS. In US gap under the installment sales, sales are being recognized or revenue is being recognized 
Oh, sorry, revenue is being actually deferred beyond the time point of sales and is being associated with the subsequent collection. Here, ASC 606 says you need to defer the revenue for installment sale and you'll be recognizing the revenue based on the collection. So this is different than the IFRS, right? IFRS says as and when risk and reward is being transferred, you can recognize the revenue. But in US GAAP, it says it will be based on the collection in the future, right? So here, generally in installment sale or higher purchase, collection is difficult. That is the reason they have applied this approach that revenue will be recognized based on the subsequent collection, right? So this is different in ASC 606 than the IFRS. Deviation from, and this is also deviation from accrual method. The rationale of the method is the length of the install, installment contract and the nature of the contract. Itself impose a degree of uncertainty concerning the collection, such that reasonably dependable estimates of uncollectible are not possible. In US, it is very much common to purchase uh, uh, you can say equipments, machineries, cars on the higher purchase or installment sale. But most of the time, most of the time people fail to make those payments on time and then they need to recover those assets from the customer. So they feel it is very uncertain to ensure all the collections in the future. So that is the reason they are using more of cash-based approach for the installment sale than the accrual method. Where the condition exists, seller typically retain the right to repossess the property involved in the sale. So I'll show you like how those accounting has been made for the installment sale and when and how much revenue is being recognized. Under the installment sale method, the gross profit on the sale, gross profit on the sale is deferred not the entire sale, only the gross profit on the sale effort, but not the entire sale and recognized on a cash basis as and when actual money is being received, right? So if you see like journal entry here, for example, I have sold a car, right? For $500,000. I have sold a machinery, let's say for $500,000 Right. So at that, at the time of installment sale, at the time of install, or let's say I have made this installment sale for uh, uh, over the period of let's say fifty thousand dollar every year, let's say for ten years. Okay. So here, at the time of sale, the journal entry I'll be making is installment account receivable to installment sale of five hundred thousand. So I'll be yeah. recording the sale. Yeah, four hundred k recovers. Huh? Sorry. Wape credit me four hundred K Likawa. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, one second. Okay. So there are two methods to record the to defer the gross profit in installment sale. First three entry is one method, fourth entry is different method actually. So first entry, when you make the sale, you will say account receivable, installment account receivable debit to sales with the 500,000, 500,000, right? Cost of goods sold to inventory, 400,000, 400,000. Like now here the gross margin is $100,000, right? Your cost is 400 and your sales is 500, gross margin is $100,000 and during the period you have received the installment of $175,000. So cash account debit to installment account receivable $175,000 which you have collected. Right. So now holding gross profit on installment sales. So installment sales is $500,000 to cost of installment sales $400,000 to deferment of gross profit of 100,000 or at year end, what you do, gross profit account debit 
to deferred gross profit sales of 100,000. That means, uh, one second. That means if you are using this one, if you are using first journal entry, in that case, you'll be posting this entry at year end and you'll be deferring the gross profit of $100,000. And you'll be recognizing the revenue of $35,000. How do you have calculated? Real, recognize gross profit, 175,000 multiplied by 20%. What is 20%? 500,000 minus 400,000, 100,000. 100,000 divided by 500,000 is 20%. That means your gross profit is 20% of sales, right? 20% of collection is 35,000. So you can recognize the gross profit of 35,000. So what entry you'll be making? You will be reversing this deferred gross profit and recognizing the gross profit based on the collection you have made. Make sense? Right. So gross profit will be deferred. Second point is for the protection of seller, legal title of the property and the right to respond to the property or non-payment by the customer typically reside with the seller. It was in higher purchase or in installment sale. But legal title are generally stay with the seller unless and until he received the full amount, right? That's how like normal agreements are for the installment sale or higher purchase are. That is the reason, that is the justification of deferring the gross profit based on collection. Third is when installment sale contract include the payment of interest, the interest and gross profit portion of the payment are separated and accounted, accounted for distinctly, right? If there is interest income also in this installment sale, then you need to recognize that interest income over the period of time. What you are deferring will be only and only gross profit margin. For example, if you have made a sale of $500,000, for the period of let's say five years. Hmm? And in this 400,000 is your cost and 50,000 is your gross profit and 50,000 is let's say is your interest income which is 10,000 per year. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So you will be recognizing 50,000 which is your gross profit, right? In the proportion of 50,000 divided by 450 in that ratio based on the collection you have made and balance will go to the interest income of the current year, right? So you need to segregate interest income from the gross profit and account for separately. The installment sales method is more conservative than the usual policy of revenue recognition at the point of sale because it defer recognition until the cash is received. So this is about installment sale method, which is different in India's IFRS than the US. Okay. Right. Next is consignment sale. This is also similar to like agency relation, right? So where you provide the goods to the consigner and consigner deliver to the respective party for the sale. Here consigner, Will, uh, will recognize the revenue on a gross basis and consignee will recognize the revenue on net basis. Next is franchisee revenue. Franchisee could be, franchisee revenue could be of three types. One is one-time support if you are providing for any franchisee to set up. Second, you are providing consistent support or third, you are providing good, right? one-time setup. For example, if you are setting up your service center, uh, let's say you have taken a service center of Bajaj Automobile, right? Or maybe Hyundai car, or maybe like HP, Lenovo, or Dell laptop. 
So first time they will be doing all the installation of, uh, you can say machineries, and they will be giving you one-time uh, staff training as well, right? That will come under the one-time setup and support cost would be the franchisee revenue. And the revenue, uh, recognize the revenue when all the material services or condition relating to the sale have been substantially satisfied. For example, I am HP company and you are taking a service center of mine. Hmm? So at that point of time, when you apply for the service center and we approve your service center, we'll be installing certain machineries at your place and we will be giving the training to your staff to manage those service center right so once i deliver the machinery install the machinery at your place and deliver the, uh, the training to your staff then my responsibility will be over right that is a one time setup support i have given so once my obligations are over then i can recognize the revenue as and when it has been done Make sense? Mm -hmm. Second is, let's say, uh, I have given you franchisee for Reebok or Adidas, right? Or maybe uh, Louis Phillips, right? This kind of brand. So here, every time I am delivering the material to you, which you are selling from your outlet, mm -hmm. right? It's a recurring support I'm giving to you, right? You will open your store, you will do all the designing, right? Based on the agreement. And then after recurringly, I'm being supplying the material to you and charging the franchisee revenue based on the number of units you sell, right? That is called a recurring support revenue model. That can be royalty model, that can be marketing model, that can be management support, or that can be supply of material. Here, recognize the revenue over the period of time. Make sense? Sure. Third thing, where you get both. You get installation, one-time support, and the recurring support as well. For example, Domino's, KFC, Baiju's, right? Now Baiju's are opening tuition center, right? Have you heard about that? Yes, sir. Yes. Right? So, for example, you are taking a franchisee of Domino's. So they will do installation of the machinery at your place. Right, and every day they will be delivering the breads and the material as well. Right, which you will take the standard bill of material, which you take standard material from them, and then on that you will be making the pizzas and giving to the general public for sale. And they will be charging a franchisee revenue for that. So here they will be giving you one time support and the recurring support. Mode. So whatsoever the things they have one time support as and when those performance obligation are satisfied, they can recognize the revenue for that. And for the over the period of time services, which they are providing for them, they will be recognizing the revenue over the period of time. Make sense. Mm -hmm. That is what is the franchisee revenue. Recognition. Right. Any doubt here? So now what all disclosure you need to make for the franchisee revenue. So first thing is commitment. What all commitments and obligation you have toward the franchisee. For example, I am a Domino's and you have taken my franchise, right? What all commitment I have for you that I need to disclose in my notes to accounts. Second is, if any franchisee fee, for example, you have given $10,000 advance to me, right? Mm -hmm. For which over the period of 10 months, I'll be delivering you the supply of material, right? And the year end, whatsoever, for whatsoever the amount, I have not delivered those performance obligation is my deferred franchise revenue. Same way how we have discussed earlier, advance from customer or unearned revenue, right? Mm -hmm. Initial franchisee fees, which you have received, you need to disclose separately than the recurring one. Revenue and costs related to franchisee outlet. So these are additional disclosure you need to make when you go into the franchisee fee arrangement. 
right now coming to the another topic which is non government not for profit so if you are a non government or not for profit organization so what do you receive what revenue you will recognize so here you will be receiving the contribution right as an ngo for example if you are an ngo what all will be your collection what all will be your revenue three things one is contribution revenue second is fund raising activity if you have done third is exchange if you have done any so contribution is like donation hmm? fund raising activity for special cause for any specific thing you are raising the fund exchange terms of uh, exchange terms oh, one second just give me a some type where exchange transaction exchange transaction what term? exchange transaction revenue so here you are providing certain services in exchange of that you are receiving certain money right so these are the three things from which any ngo or not not non government organization or not for profit organization like trust church ngo receive the money and this money is being the revenue from right it can be gift grant it can be uh, like uh, fund raising activity uh, like for example covid care fund if you have collected you have raised the fund you have requested the people to uh, give you the money and you are doing some covid care services right Thank so you. revenue is measured at the net realizable value if expected to be received within one year or at present value if it is expected to be received over the period of time so type of contribution so there are two type of contribution right here we have discussed contribution revenue right that can be gift grant or any uh, donation that comes under the contribution revenue but contribution could be of two type one is restricted contribution second is unrestricted contribution like for example people like you and me we went to church and we dropped let's say 10 dollar 20 dollar 50 dollar based on our capacity in the donation box but we have not said for what purpose that church will be using this money so that is unrestricted contribution right so for those the trust can recognize the revenue immediately right so now for example the trust is doing fund raising activity and you are doing contribution for them so trust is creating a covid care fund and they will say we will spend this money only and only for the support to the covid care families hmm? second let's say they have created a fund to pay the fees for the underprivileged student for their schooling right so these are specific activity for which they are doing fund raising and you are making contribution for that let's say aniket has agreed to pay the dollar in the fund which is to be utilized for the tuition fees or school fees of underprivileged student and kamal has contributed 100 dollar for the covid care fund so here we have done the we, what kind of contribution we have made is the donor restricted contribution that means the money i am giving to be utilized for this specific purpose right makes sense uh -huh. the restriction can be used basis like the example we have given covid care fund need to be used for the covid survivor and school ke uh, school education fund is being specific for the underprivileged student that is called usage basis restriction and restriction can be time basis as well so i said i said i'll give you every year One thousand dollar donation over the period of five year. I have given you commitment to your church that I'll pay, I'll donate one thousand dollar each year for next five year, for let's say 
renovation of the trust so here it is a time based restriction so my commitment is clear i have intent and ability to pay 5000 dollar but i will be paying over the period of 5 year that means you will not be recognizing the 5000 dollar revenue right now you will be recognizing the revenue 1000 dollar each year make sense mm -hmm. so that is called time based restriction use based restriction or time based restriction or unrestricted fund hmm? when restriction is satisfied so when restriction is satisfied then you can recognize the respective revenue net asset is recently released from the restriction and the result into increase in net asset without donor restriction and decrease the net asset with the donor restriction second if the restriction is met with the same reporting period then contribution is reported as unrestricted support and will be recognized as a revenue third is donated services are considered at fair value ha huh. so for example for example you are a cpa right you said to the trust i will manage and maintain your accounts and your tax records right so for same level of transaction if anyone else give you the business you will be charging let's say 200 dollar every month right so the services which you are providing to the church free of cost those are also need to be recognized by them as revenue at the fair market value make sense okay so donated services are considered at fair value contribution revenue if the following three conditions are met first specialized skill is required like you are a cpa you have special skill in accounting and tax management right the individual donating the services possess those skills that means you have those skills sir third is organization would have to buy the services if they were not been donated by you that means i have to appoint some cpa to do those services if you would have not donated those services to the trust so if these three condition are met then trust need to recognize the revenue at a fair value of those services right and contribution of revenue will be can be classified in either revenue or gain received from ongoing major or central activity then recognized on a gross basis if received from incidental activity then report on a net basis as a gain so what is like general activity like every company you have like aoa moa have you heard about this term memorandum of association article of association same way all trust and ngo they have also their charter right what is the main reason that trust has been formed what is the main cause purpose and objective of the trust right if they are receiving the contribution relating to their main purpose and objective of the trust then those things will be recognized as a revenue on a gross basis but for example if they are selling any asset right and for that you have achieved any gain then those gain need to be recognized on a net basis that's what it means make sense right sir so this is all about asc 606 revenue recognition standard khatam ho gaya sare topics iske yes everything relating to asc 606 is being completely covered right okay. all five step all the respective topics everything we have covered so now you are free to do as much as question you can practice okay. from your uh, okay. learning management software and then if you have any doubt we can discuss before starting the next topic theek hai sir bas ek next topic se jo next topic jo hum karenge aapko excel ek bari agar aap share kar le 